What's up everybody, thank you for checking this video and welcome back to the PHP for Beginners series. In the previous video we created a bunch of very simple variables and saw some basic differences between the echo and print method. In today's video we're gonna start looking at how PHP can handle multiple files with the include and require methods and their variations. I'm gonna update the strings of our title and description variables just to have some more realistic test data as well as creating a p variable to echo as paragraph text. Let's clean up a little bit our index.php to get a very simple structure. Now let's create a new variables.php file and move all the variables we originally declare at the top of our index.php inside our variables.php file. If we reload our page in the browser, we will obviously get an error since all the variables we're trying to echo are not available anymore. Whenever we need to tap data in the form of variables or methods from another PHP file, we can use the include method to point to that file. In preparation for later, let's also add a footer markup and write some simple text that doesn't rely on any variable. Now, at the top of our index file, let's open the PHP tags and write include, space, double quotes, and the name of the file we want to include in our case, variables.php. If we reload our website, everything should work as it did before. The include method allows us to literally include one file inside another. This method will grab the entire file we're pointing to and make all its content available inside the parent file. There's also the require method that does pretty much the same, but there's one fundamental difference. If something goes wrong while using the include method, for example, we write an incorrect file name, the include method will not trigger any critical error but only warning notices, effectively letting the rest of the page and the code run uninterrupted. We have confirmation of this thanks to our footer present inside our page even if everything else is failing. If instead of include we use the require method, this will cause a fatal error in our code execution, effectively blocking anything else after the first encounter error. So when should we use one or the other method? Let's use this very simple rule of thumb in order to decide. Include doesn't trigger a fatal error if something goes wrong, but only triggers some warnings and continues the execution of the rest of the code. Require does trigger a fatal error if something goes wrong and blocks the execution of the rest of the code. Include should be used when the requested data is not absolutely important for the correct execution of our code, and we can ignore those temporary errors without preventing the rest of the code from running. Require should be used when the requested data is vital for the correct execution of our code, and we want to prevent any further running or continuation of our script if something is missing. There are also a couple of related methods that are pretty common, which are the include underscore once and require underscore once. These variations do exactly the same as their regular counterparts, with the exception of being smart enough to know when a file has already been required or included and avoiding fetching it again. An extra little tasty treat to keep your code clean and easy to maintain is to remember to not close the PHP tags if your file is purely PHP and you don't need to print any HTML markup. PHP is smart enough to basically self-close any open tags when the file ends. This is recommended especially in older version of PHP. Modern PHP handles output buffering pretty well, but it's always better to be extra careful, especially when handling a very complex project structure, as having undesired extra characters at the end of our file after closing the PHP tags might cause the send of unwanted HTTP headers before the normal execution lifetime of our code, and that can culminate in multiple issues. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make a video about these issues and how to spot them. But long story short is, 
Don't close the PHP tags if you don't need to, it's safer. Another little helpful info is related to something that you might stumble upon in other code bases, where the echo method is omitted and instead you might find an equal sign after the question mark of the PHP tag. That's called a short tag. And also in this case, I wouldn't recommend using it. Other than being less explicit and making the code less easy to read, this particular variation can be disabled via the php.ini file. So your code might end up running on a server where the admin disabled a specific short tag, making your code entirely incompatible. Well, that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring the bell to not miss any upcoming tutorials on this series. Thank you so much for watching and happy coding!